Okay, hi everybody. We're here in the John Ewald pit and we're going to be talking about two wonderful front motor dragsters that are back with us and running thanks to John and uh, his money. <laughs> and uh, John's going to go over these cars with us and tell us their history. Johnny, could you explain this first one, which is the Bank AmeriCar? Well, this is a, a car that uh, actually the chassis was bolted to the roof of little John Butera's car when he moved out here from Wisconsin. This wow. is going to be his car. Right. And uh, he went to work for Mickey Thompson, and we didn't know at the moment it was there. Well, our shop behind us was uh, Richard Lockerman. We were in Junior Fuel. Right. And Lockerman had an R&B chassis, a uh, Rollins and Butera chassis. And it was really a neat looking car. So my brother called up uh, Butera and said, uh, we knew he was working Mickey's, and said, uh, how, how long would it take to get a top fuel version of that car? And Butera said, you can come pick it up next week. Wow. So, so the timing was perfect for this yeah, one. Yeah, huh? he decided he was gonna, not going to be able to run the car, so he decided he'd sell it to us. Okay. So we bought uh, bought a complete roller from him for 750 bucks. Wonderful. Yeah. Tell me about the car as far as its, its wheelbase and... Uh, various aspects of it. I'm just going to work my way around it. Anything unique or different about the car that you can tell me about? You're the voice. Yeah, I can. Well, it's 185 up. inch. Yeah. So it could fit into the standard garage back then. That's a big help. And uh, when we first got it, we got a hold of Tom Hanna and asked him, you know, because nose pieces were kind of getting popular, and we asked him how much it would cost to put a nose piece on it. He came up with this outrageous price of $450. <laughs> so we panicked and said, no way. Um, and uh, so we just put it together with just the pipe. The uh, engine had all come from uh, uh, Bainey and when he switched to late ball. So he had a bunch of uh, 392s. So we got a lot of parts from Lou yeah. and built the first engine out of those parts. And. Uh, it, it, started is, running. it is the very last front engine car built by John Butera. Yeah, where, where did it go after you guys were finished with it? I mean, well, we sold it in 71 uh, to build a rear engine car. Right. And it, we didn't know where it happened to it, quite frankly. We heard it had gone we, back east. And then we started looking for it again. And uh, night, we put a thing out on the website. And uh, 99, a guy got a hold of us. from Atlanta and he said I think I have your car well because it had some real unique parts that little John had built on the car he sent us pictures and sure enough it was the car yeah so uh, I asked him well I'd really be interested in buying it back and he said well that's fine but it's not for sale he was running a big block Chevy in it and still going over 200 miles an hour in a 35 year old car and uh, it wasn't until 2001 he called me up and said uh, that they wouldn't certify the chassis anymore. So uh, if I'd buy him a brand new chassis, he'd give me my car back. So I spent uh, a little over $5,000 to buy back my $750 car. <laughs> yeah, right. I then know. we started restoring. And uh, little John, who originally had said he would help on the restoration, but he by the time I got it back, he had sold his hot rod shop, so he wasn't able to help out, so we took it over to Bruce Dida, and uh, Bruce is a real purist, and I had obviously plenty of photos of it, so uh, it got all restored over at Dida's shop, and Kenny Youngblood, who had actually named the car originally, uh, he uh, re repainted it, relettered it, the way he had done in 1968. It got named after a credit card because that's what we used to buy parts because we didn't have any cash back then. And the uh, Bank of America card was just new. Uh, the credit card business was just getting started. Right. So uh, Kenny came up with the name Bank of America uh, and it just stuck good. Yeah. We never could get Bank of America to back us in anything. So anyway, Dida got the car all done and uh, when little John uh, got to see the car for the first time, being the perfectionist he is, he went over the whole car and he looked at it and he said it's perfect, which was about the most best compliment Bruce Dida could ever get in his lifetime to be told that. Yeah, that's wonderful. And uh, we 
talked John into climbing in the car for uh, a fire up and uh, a little resistance at first, but after he climbed in and lit it, a normal grim grimace of his turned into a big grin, <laughs> and he uh, really enjoyed it. And actually, you know, thanked me for talking to him and do it, and then. Uh, and a couple other events from then, he liked to climb in it for that. And then, of course, we put his granddaughter and his daughter Lee into the car. And and, and and how many times do you think you fired this car up and shared it with people? Well, we haven't kept track of them exactly, but between the two cars, we're a little over 1,300 fire-ups. Just amazing. Just amazing. We burn a lot of nitro. Right. Well, let's move over here to the uh, to the master car. And you can tell me about this one. Well, this car was originally uh, it's a Jim Davis chassis, and it was originally raced uh, by a gentleman named Bill Webster. Right. Um, and ran top fuel, top gas. What year? And. Uh, he built it in 1968, and right. uh, he ran it until 1970. Uh, he blew it up, ran out of money, couldn't afford to run it anymore, so it ended up uh, being sold to a couple of brothers who turned it into a, uh, a gas track with a late model Hemi in it. They ran it for a few years, and then they got put in a barn that sat there for uh, over 20 years, untouched. Love that. And uh, the guy... Uh, a guy found it and took it to John Shoemaker and asked him uh, he wanted to get it updated so he could run it in the new Nostalgia series. And John Shoemaker said, uh, if you touch this car, there's going to be some guys that are probably going to beat you up <laughs> touching a virgin car. So he put him in touch with me, and I just happened to have a Woody car that had already been all upgraded. And so basically we just did a trade. And uh, going along with our credit card theme, uh, we named it the Master Car. Uh, it primarily got built as an exhibition show car. Uh, we were doing a lot of shows for Firestone, and they uh, wanted me to be able to fire them up a little more often than once every two hours. So uh, building a second car, we were able to give them a fire up once an hour, just switching them back and forth. Uh, they both have the 392 Hemis out of 58 Chrysler Imperial. Um, Bob Danley does the crew chief work on both cars and does all the maintenance. Does a great job. And Mario Mario's, Mario's now a well, he's not only the crew now. He is uh, my backup driver now. He's uh, officially now a driver. He's done his push starts. And once again, thank you once again for all that you do, buddy. He's Matt. done his push starts, and he actually got to drive through uh, Bakersfield in our last big Bobby, Bobby, thank you Danley. for everything you do, okay. buddy. And uh, to, uh, between the three of us, we actually accomplished quite a bit and uh, with a lot of shows and try to bring people uh, a lot of entertainment. And you do that in spades. Had a the... lot of uh, celebrities in the cars over the year, a lot of uh, kids. Uh, we've and done Make-A-Wish. We've made a lot, a lot of memories, of memories that people will remember for the rest of their lives, and that's what's so great about these cars. So, Well, we finally found out how to make money in racing. Don't race them.